when my family and I went to the beach last year and did a little salt water fishing for the first time, we took a couple of cheap reels and rods that we picked up at Walmart. They're very inexpensive, Ozark Trail. They're called Grit Stick. They're a 3000 series reel, kind of a medium duty type of a reel. As you can see, I had them spooled with braid and the line lay is very good. I spooled these by hand. I didn't take them in and have them spooled. So the line lay is very good on these. And this one's still in good shape. This one is totally locked up. So that's what I want to talk to y'all today about. We had these reels out using them in salt water. It's been almost a year ago now. And I put the reels and the rods up in my garage and I haven't really looked at them since. I know you're supposed to clean the reels out after salt water fishing, especially an inexpensive one like this. There's no sealing whatsoever, I'm sure, on, on these to keep water out. I was going back through some videos a while back and I noticed that one of them was sitting in the water. <laughs> one of my kids had a fish on and it had to have been this reel was actually in the water when he was taking the fish off. That's why I bought these. I didn't expect to get 20 years out of these reels or rods, but I did want to take the opportunity to go through it and see what's going on, why this reel is locked up. I want to give it a look and see what's going on. But as you can see, the handle is totally locked up. There is no turn in that gear, the main gear at all, the rotor, it's locked up and we'll take a look at it and see what's going on and maybe this will help somebody out in the future. I'm just going to go ahead and get started by taking the handle off. Now you can see through there, I'm going to just try to turn this rotor and you can see it's not moving at all. One thing you want to do if you have a locked up reel, you want to make sure you don't force anything because if there was any chance it could be repaired, if you try to force it loose, there's a good chance that you're gonna tear it up. So don't try to force anything, take it apart, see what's going on, see if it can be repaired. And if, if you can fix it, great. If you can't, you'll just have to move on to something else. It's not too bad made on the top end. So I figured it'd be worth trying to salvage this if the insides are in decent enough shape. And you can see a little corrosion there on the bottom of this drag knob. It's got a metal plate in there. There's some corrosion there. All that can be cleaned up. I'm not too worried about it. There's a little corrosion on the inside on the surface of one of the drag washers, the metal drag washers, a little corrosion there. So I'd take that drag stack apart, clean all that up. I know this probably won't show up, but this is a machine aluminum spool. so. That's not too bad. And it actually has a metal drag clicker. And that's about as far as I got with this reel earlier. I decided I'd better do a video on it instead of just taking it apart and fixing it. Maybe it could help somebody else out. So the top end's not that bad, but it does have felt drag washers, but the, they're good size drag washers. You could easily replace those with carbon fiber. And I'll put a link up here in the top right hand corner of this video in the info button. If you'll click on that, I'll put a link to a video I have that shows how you can make your own carbon fiber washers. And this came off with the spool, but that would have normally been on this shaft. And that's the drag clicker gear. And then that's a spool washer. And that spool washer, there's, I think there's a couple of them on there. They're just spacers to get this at the proper height off of this drag clicker gear. That way it lays the line evenly on the spool. This is a real common design that on newer modern reels, a lot of reels are made real similar to this. So a lot of this will be applicable to a lot of newer reels that you'll run across on the disassembly. It, it'll probably at least get you in the ballpark for getting a reel apart, especially inexpensive one like this. Take that back off. So now what we've got here is the rotor nut and you'll need to break that loose. These can either be left hand or right hand threads on these newer reels. You gotta be careful when you're trying to break it loose that you don't over tighten it one way or the other. This one comes loose. It feels like moving it clockwise, which ordinarily, you know, the old saying righty tighty, lefty loosey, but this one and a lot of other rotors use a left hand thread nut, which is the opposite of a typical nut and bolt setup. So this one's threaded on 
with a left hand thread. And like I say, these could be either or, so you wanna make sure that you're not over tightening something. If you don't get it to move one direction, try the other without putting too much torque on it so you don't mess anything up. A lot of reels are left hand thread on the rotor nut, just, just to clarify, but there are some that aren't, so be careful with that. Once you get the rotor nut off, the whole rotor assembly will come off. Woo, that's a mess. Lots of corrosion here. And these are corroded pretty bad, but it's mostly on the surface. So I could actually clean this up, assuming there's nothing else that's too damaged. There's the little bearing retainer plate. And as you're taking screws out, make sure they're all the same size. If they're not, make a note of it. Just say, for example, this screw had been shorter than these others, you would have wanted to make a note of that. That way, when you go back to put it back together, you'll know exactly where each screw goes in each hole. This one, it's not gonna make any difference. They're all the same thread size and they're all the same length. So this one's not gonna make any difference. But that's something you wanna keep an eye out for as you're taking a reel apart. And take plenty of pictures if you got your cell phone or whatever with you. Take plenty of pictures so you'll remember how to get this stuff back together. All right, we've got this down to this point and you can see the anti-reverse lever here and the spring's still on and it's still in good shape. These springs are a common problem of anti-reverse failures on newer reels that use infinite anti-reverse these springs can pop off from time to time and that will keep your anti-reverse from working the way it should so if you're having problems with anti-reverse come take a look and make sure your spring's still intact there okay at this point i believe i'm going to go ahead and remove the side plate from this reel and we'll take a look at the gearing and this bearing could very well be the cause of my problems here, but we're gonna dig a little deeper and just get the whole thing apart because it needs to be cleaned anyway. I'm just gonna lay these screws out in kind of the pattern. If I was looking at this side plate with the leg pointed up, I'm gonna lay these screws out kind of in that pattern over here in case there are any that are different lengths. I'll know where they go back. And there's almost always a screw under this cover here. So take the cover off first and then look for another screw that holds that side plate on. And there it is right there. Okay, now the side plate's loose. I'm gonna see if I can get it off of here. And the way that's stuck, we got more corrosion going on here. You can see some corrosion in this bearing. I'm gonna check this inner race and see if it will turn it all in this bearing housing. So this inner race is totally locked up on this bearing. It would probably be best just to replace it. That's not a high quality bearing anyway. It probably would be better off just to replace it. And if you're freshwater fishing, you can replace it with just about anything. For saltwater fishing though, you'll wanna look for some stainless steel bearings or possibly even some ceramic bearings or even hybrid bearings. So this bearing is totally locked up. Now that it's off, I'm gonna see if this will turn at all now. And I got just a little movement. There's a little movement out of that pinion gear now. So that bearing was probably the major culprit. Still stiff. Still needs to come apart, be re-lubricated. This reel will be salvageable. This main gear is not wanting to come out. And usually when that doesn't come out very easily, it's because the oscillation shaft is too tight up against it. What I need to do is back this pinion gear off enough to get the oscillation slider back here to this position so I can get the screw out of it. And now that screw in the slider is exposed so I can take it out and remove the oscillation shaft. And 
And now this main gear should just slide right out. So what was happening was this oscillation shaft was running through there in this area. So when you go to pull the main gear out, it doesn't want to come out. So once you get this slid out, then it just, then the main gear will come right out. And when you removing these things, check your main gear because there's almost always a shim washer on there. So as you're taking these things apart, be sure to check for washers and get them back in their proper location. Now I see back here that there's actually not a bearing on this other housing. That in all likelihood is a, is a nylon bushing. It's definitely a plastic bushing. These really don't fail that often. They can get wore out. They don't fail that often. And which one do you think was more reliable? Now I know this is a cheap reel and that has a lot to do with it. They obviously did not use high quality stainless steel bearings in this. But if you're buying a cheap reel, which part do you think is going to hold up better over the long haul? It's probably not going to be the cheap bearings. It's going to be the bushings. And you'll see some low-end reels from manufacturers like Shimano. They've got a, a low-end reel. I'll put a little picture up here so you can take a look at it. They've been making these things for years. And they just work. And they're very inexpensive, but they use plastic bushings. And that's something that people are really quick to point out, you know, hey, this reel's got so many bearings in it and things. That, that's not always a good thing, especially if they're using junk bearings in the reel. So keep that in mind. Uh, manufacturers like Penn, if they're building a saltwater reel or something, even if it's made in China, they're going to use good quality components and they're going to have a higher quality assurance standard than some no-name company that's putting out reels. So keep that in mind while you're reel shopping and you know if there's any chance you might get in brackish water or salt water or if you're in a sandy environment fishing and your reel might get laid down in the sand, remember things like bearings can actually cause you more problems than you would ever think about when there's a corrosion factor there. That's why some of the oldest salt water reels that had bronze bushings, they're still going. And, and those things are older than I am. Some of those things are 60, 50, 60 years old. I'm 42. Any reel that's older than me and it's still around and doing its job, to me that reel has earned its keep. You can see there's some corrosion here on this plate. This plate is a little plate that helps stabilize this oscillation slider that moves back and forth on this gear and there's a little piece that rides along this plate so i'd want to take this plate out and clean it up and lubricate it real good so it doesn't corrode again this is obviously not a reel that's built for being in the salt water environment there's too many parts that are steel in it that are not stainless steel or they're very very low grade of stainless steel that's what you're wanting to look for when you're taking a reel apart. You're wanting to look for the bearings that are locked up. Now obviously this one looks really bad, but it still rotates. If I were rebuilding this reel, I would replace this bearing. I'd take a look at my anti-reverse. In fact, let's just do that. Let's take a look at the anti-reverse so you might get an idea of, of how the anti-reverse is made also. That's just a little screw that's in the lever for the anti-reverse. I'm taking that screw out. That's the oscillation slider. It's just kind of floating around in there. I'm going to get it out of the way. I'm going to go ahead and remove this oscillation gear also. So the gears are all in good shape. It's just the bearings that are causing the issues. And to remove the rust that's on these parts, it's mostly surface rust. I'll probably just hit it with a wire brush and clean it up and get the rust off and re-lubricate parts like this. Now you wanna be really careful when you're doing stuff like this. You wanna make sure you don't lose that spring. There come the rest of it. 
out of there. This bearing's in a plastic housing. The anti-reverse is probably still in good shape. I wanna pull this off together as one piece. There's a sleeve that's in these anti-reverse clutches. That's a sleeve, and this is a, a one-way bearing that can be turned off or on. And that sleeve, you'll wanna check it and make sure it's not corroded. And you want to be very careful when you take this sleeve out that you don't lose the little needle bearings that are in the anti-reverse. So be careful with that. I'm gonna pull the sleeve out. And there is a little bit of corrosion on here. It's all very much surface corrosion. So that should clean up really well too. So I'll just wanna clean all this up. Another problem that you can have with the instant anti-reverse is you can get oil, excessive amounts of oil, or especially grease on these sleeves, and they won't ever lock up tight against those sleeves at that point, and they'll start slipping. It's mostly the spring that's on here and the sleeve getting grease or oil, and it keeps those little needle rollers. I don't know if you can see them in there or not. There's little needle bearings inside of the anti-reverse that run up and down the width of it. They run this way. So they're not actual ball bearings, they're roller bearings. And those can get stuck if there's excessive amounts of oil or grease and not drop down into position like they're supposed to. And they can also cause some slipping between the rollers and this sleeve and keep it from locking down the way it should. The spring and that are the two most common problems I've seen on instant anti-reverse. And this final bearing here, I'll take a look at it. And it's not in too bad a shape, but it's a little stiff. Let me show you how you can measure these bearings so you'll know what size to get. This is just a real inexpensive digital caliper. You can pick these up at Harbor Freight. They're very cheap. These are not metal. These are probably graphite. And they're very inexpensive, but they work well for things like this where you're not doing super precise measuring. So let's turn this on and you can set it to inches or millimeters. And pretty much most reels anymore all the bearings are going to be measured in millimeters. So when you're looking for bearings, the way you'll see them called out is they will list the bore diameter first. So on this one, it's seven. So that would be the first number on the call out for the bearing size would be a seven. The outside diameter would be your next one. So it'd be a seven by 14 because it's 14 millimeter diameter. And then the thickness will be the third number. Three and a half. It's 3.4. I know that they don't make 3.4. So you can just round it up if it'll be what you need. If it's reading off just a little. So this would be a seven by 14 by three and a half on that bearing size seven millimeters by 14 by three and a half. So then you can go online, look up the bearing, get an idea of the price of them and see if it's gonna be worth it to you to replace them or not. On this one that's pressed into this housing, it should just pop out of there by pushing it out from the back side here. And you can see it starting to come out. You'd measure it the same way. You'd want to pop those bearings completely out just to verify and make sure that's what you're actually looking for. And I've got some bearings in these sizes, so I'm just going to swap them out. Usually what I do, because I freshwater fish, I buy the cheapest bearings I can get. And I'll buy a bunch of them at one time because they're common sizes. I know I have some 7 by 14 by 3 and a half bearings in my bearing box because when I order them, if I'm ordering one bearing, I'm ordering 10 at least. And then I've got them because I work on a lot of reels. If you don't, you might just want to order what you need and go on. And that would be fine too. But I work on a lot of reels and I replace a lot of bearings. I fish in fresh water. I'm not concerned about corrosion. I know these are corroded. 
that's literally the only time I've ever been fishing in salt water. And I'll probably take these reels with me and do it again after I clean them up because they're already messed up a little. They've got a little corrosion on them and it saves my good ones. So I'll keep these going. The way I order my bearings, I usually get 10 of them for about $5 or so. This will at least give you an idea of what would be involved in something like this repair. And by the way, if you see a bushing like this and you take some measurements on it, This is a seven by 11 by three. They do make bearings in that size. If you're freshwater fishing and you're buying cheap bearings, you know, you might want to replace that with a ball bearing too. Then it would be a four plus one on the bearing count if you're into that kind of thing. If not, I mean, honestly, this will be as reliable. This bushing will probably last as long as the reel. Uh, you'll probably have other parts starting to fail by that point. But just looking at it, the gears are still in good shape. Now these are not a high quality metal on the main drive shaft. It's some sort of an alloy, pot metal, whatever you want to call it. I'm sure it has some aluminum content to it because it's fairly lightweight. But it's, it's a low grade type of a gear. And this brass pinion gear is actually not bad at all. You know, and because these two metals are dissimilar, they will wear better for a long period of time than two similar metals. If this gear was brass, you wouldn't have much of a chance of shearing off these teeth. And these teeth will shear on a gear like this. If you get into a fish that's bigger than this gear is designed to handle and you're really cranking it, you could very easily shear these teeth off. So when you're using an inexpensive reel, make sure also that you use your drag. You know, you don't want to horse the fish in. Even if your line is braid and it's a 300 pound braid and it's a 60 pound fish, you know, you, then you can really do some damage to some cheap gear sets. And honestly, most newer reels are an alloy on this main drive gear. If you're gonna shear one of the teeth on it, it's gonna be on the main drive gear usually. If you've got both of them in their pot metal or whatever alloy it is, uh, you could shear either one, but your, your main drive gear is usually gonna be where your gear gets tore up. So that's just some things to think about. You know, we've looked a little bit at the anti-reverse, the instant anti-reverse setup. The two common causes for failure there would be the spring coming off and losing that spring or, or it just being loose in there and not attached where it should be. There'll be a little arm here, and then there's a little arm on the um, anti-reverse lever that actuates that spring back and forth on this collar. The other thing could be excessive amounts of oil or grease inside of here. It needs some for lubrication. If you get grease in here though, it can actually clog it up enough to where the needle bearings don't move like they're supposed to when this clutch is engaged and disengaged. Uh, so that can cause a failure on your anti-reverse too. We talked a little bit about possible causes of failures between the gear sets. And then what we had going on here for the locked up reel was the side cover bearing is just totally locked up. It's not budging. And it could possibly be cleaned up and reused, but with that much corrosion on the inside of a ball bearing, it's going to feel rough after that because the surface areas are going to be pitted. So you're going to feel that through the reel. So it's best just to replace those. And if you want to make it more of a saltwater reel on a cheap one like this, buy some good bearings and it's going to hold up better. But you're still going to have the little pieces like this that got corroded. And you can see that's not a high quality stainless steel if it's stainless steel at all on those drag washers. There was some corrosion there. Uh, you would expect to see some corrosion around springs and things that aren't sealed. And also on the back side of this drag knob, the metal plate is corroded. So, you know, for what I'm doing for saltwater fishing, I'm gonna pop some new bearings in this and go again. And this time I'll make sure to clean this reel out real good. 
I'll probably just take it home, disassemble everything, throw it in the ultrasonic cleaner, put it back together after the trip this year if we go. Um, but it made it home and sat in my garage for almost a year now and uh, you can see what's happened. And this reel probably wasn't underwater for any more than maybe less than a minute, I'm sure, while he was just taking a fish off and releasing the fish. That, that reel couldn't have been underwater for any more than a minute and it did all, all that corrosion. Uh, because it's not sealed, it's not made to be saltwater fish, the bearings are cheap. So that's what you're looking at on a cheap reel. I hope this might help you all out a little bit, maybe give you some ideas of where to start looking if you've got a reel that's locked up. It could very well be a, a bearing that's frozen up. You could have two gears that are frozen together. They've got some kind of a corrosion that's bonded two gears together. That could happen. Things like that, that's what you're wanting to look for. Replace or repair is needed, clean up is needed, relubricate everything and put it back together in the order you took it apart in and you should be good to go. And this will hopefully give you a good idea of how to get apart. Most modern spinning reels are gonna be made similar to this one. You get into some really expensive reels with special sealing and things, they can get a little more complicated. But a basic fishing reel, this is about all there is to them on the newer ones. Hope y'all enjoyed it. I hope somebody finds it useful and can make use of this information. Maybe it'll get them out of a jam. I'll talk to you guys later. Tight lines.